So CNN ran a giant smear piece on YouTube in what's fundamentally a coordinated effort to try to get advertisers to further demonetize creators. So listen, I'm, I'm usually somebody who doesn't assume bad intent on other people's part. I, I like to assume good intent and that when people talk about stuff, they sincerely believe what they're talking about and they're doing it, um, you know, without malice. But this is an instance where, uh, having read this article three or four times, there is no other takeaway than this is a smear campaign, it's a hatchet job, and it's done on purpose by CNN to try to take out what they now recognize is a competitor in YouTube. Okay, so let's dive into it here. Exclusive YouTube ran ads from hundreds of brands on extremist channels. So this, this is what happened with the Wall Street Journal not that long ago. This is what led to the first ad apocalypse. And uh, just to give you the, the Cliff Notes version of it, um, what happens is YouTube places ads via algorithms because they don't have, you can't have enough people to place the individual ads on the individual channels because there's so many goddamn YouTube channels and so many goddamn YouTube views that it's, not, it's fundamentally not possible, logistically not possible to have a human being do every single thing. So uh, they place ads through algorithms. Now, every now and then, something happens where an ad will basically slip through the cracks and get on a genuinely hateful channel. There have been examples of mainstream ads on neo-Nazi channels or KKK or I'm sure there's on jihadist videos or whatever the fuck. It's happened. It's happened. Now, what they don't tell you is the other, um, you know, piece of the puzzle here, which is that the overwhelming majority of the time, this, that's not an issue. On 99.9999999% of genuinely hateful co content, there are no ads. There are no ads. And whenever something happens to slip through the cracks, it's usually because, you know, you might have a, you might have a video where the title is not hateful, the tags are not hateful, um, and the thumbnail does not look hateful, but within that video anyway, there might be something that's hateful. But how is, how can YouTube, you know, know that that video is hateful if there's no indication based on the preliminary indicators that it's hateful. So, this isn't a problem. They're trying to make it sound like it's a fucking crisis, what's happening here, and it's not. They're obviously trying to muck something up here. That's what they're trying to do. Okay, they say this. Ads from over 300 companies and organizations, including tech giants, major retailers, newspapers, and government agencies, ran on YouTube channels promoting white nationalists, Nazis, pedophilia, conspiracy theories, and North Korean propaganda, a CNN investigation has found. They say companies such as Adidas, Amazon, Cisco, Facebook, Hershey, Hilton, LinkedIn, Mozilla, Netflix, Nordstrom, and Under Armour may have unknowingly helped finance some of these channels via the advertisements they paid for on Google-owned YouTube. U.S. tax dollars may have gone to the channels, too. Ads from five U.S. government agencies, such as the Department of Transportation and Centers for Disease Control, appeared on the channels. Many of the companies that responded to CNN said they were unaware, of their, un, they were unaware their ads had been placed on these channels and were investigating how they ended up there. If you're part of a news organization, first of all, I don't know why you're focusing on this Anyway, there's a zillion other things in the world that are way more important than this. Um, but second of all, they didn't just do an investigation and then report on it. They didn't do that. What they did is, they did an investigation, and then they narked. They ran to YouTube, and then they ran to the advertisers who are advertising on YouTube, and said, Hey, hey, did you know that, uh... Your ads are running on neo-Nazi content and KKK content? Did you know that, that it's, it, you're running on conspiracy theories? Did you know that? I, I, hey, look, I'm just looking out for you. I'm just trying to do, do the right thing by you. So maybe it's not a good idea to advertise on YouTube and you could take those ad dollars and maybe throw them back at CNN. If that isn't what's going on, then why would you contact the, the individual companies? Why would you... Uh, contact the advertisers. You wouldn't. 
you would say, oh, I'm an in, I'm a journalist, I'm a reporter. It's I know it's weird I'm focusing on this issue anyway, but nonetheless, here I go, I'm focusing on this issue. And you would just report on it. But no. They what they did is they scoured the internet from top to bottom to find the fringe examples of ads getting on genuinely hateful content. And they went, oh, this is a huge problem. Oh my God, this is a systemic crisis. Anyway, call the advertisers and tell them, hey, it doesn't look like it's safe to advertise on YouTube. Maybe you should put that ad money somewhere else. That is exactly what's happening here. There's no other possible explanation because we've already had these hit jobs in the past. And by the way, the real problem, which they'd never talk about, because we're their competition, fundamentally, when I say we, I mean YouTubers, the real problem is the opposite. The problem is these dumbass algorithms are too strict. And what they do is take any video that mentions Syria, any video that mentions Israel, any video that mentions Saudi Arabia, and it, all we do on Secular Talk is discuss controversial topics. And I always have to try to skirt the algorithms by putting in weird letters and shit because I know that certain things, just by virtue of the fact that, you know, your title has certain, uh, you know, words in them, you're going to get screwed. Even if your position is not hateful, they go, but you're discussing a topic where it is possible for somebody to be on the hateful side of that topic, therefore demonetized. So the real problem is that you have honest actors who are doing good work and uh, they're getting demonetized and they shouldn't be. That's the real problem, but they'd never run that story. Why? Because if you run that story, what's the, what's the conclusion? What's the solution? The solution is the advertisers go, uh, oh shit, we should actually spend more money on YouTube because that's where the fucking audience is, especially in the key demographic. And these poor people are getting a lot of views and they're not, they're not monetized because of a shitty algorithm. Weird how they didn't run that story. They ran the story of, oh, clutch your pearls. There's a few instances, even though 99.999999% of the time, there are no ads on hateful content. I found a few examples of ads on hateful content. Therefore, let me run to the advertisers and tell them, hey, what are you doing? Hey, I think well, maybe you should redirect that, uh, that ad money and put it in a trusted outlet like CNN. Now, there's another angle to the absurdity here, too. CNN has pushed for every single war in the modern era. We just saw, not that long ago, Wolf Blitzer on air when Rand Paul brought up to Wolf Blitzer that, hey, maybe we should stop selling weapons to Saudi Arabia because they're being used in the massacre of women and children and a genocide in Yemen. Wolf Blitzer's response was, what about the profits of the defense contractors? You want to talk about genuinely hateful content. You want to talk about calling for violence. Well, there's a pretty clear example of it. What about when Fareed Zakaria called Donald Trump presidential when he decided to bomb the shit out of Syria? So we have a direct escalation with another nuclear armed power, Russia, because Syria is their top ally. And you had everybody on CNN cheerleading, yes, yes, oh my goodness. What about... On MSNBC, when Brian Williams talked about the beauty of our weapons taking off, they show the, the missiles taking off at night. They don't show them landing, because when they land, they might massacre some civilians. But hey, whatever, don't pay attention to that. Look at the beauty of our missiles taking off. What about the fact that CNN was part of the build-up to the war in Iraq, where they said, Saddam has WMDs, oh my goodness, we need to go do an offensive war against a country that didn't attack us. So they cheerleaded for a war that killed minimum 200,000 civilians, brought about torture, brought about NSA spying. Right now we're bombing eight different countries. And uh, should I run to the advertisers and go, listen, man, these guys are fucking warmongers. They're for every single war. They sanitize them like nobody's business. They cheerlead them every step of the way. Can I go to CNN and say, oh, uh, oh my goodness, I, I don't know why advertisers are working with you. Here, let me tell them they need to flee from you because you're not safe. No, we don't do that. So, and by the way, they peddle in conspiracy theories a hell of a lot more than outlets like mine do. That's for damn sure. We don't push conspiracy theories. They do push conspiracy theories. But they're only calling for the demonetization of which one? Us. YouTubers. So, um, here's where we really take a dark turn in this piece. Listen to this. This is what they say. 
Meanwhile, ads from the Washington Post and New York Times appeared on far-right conspiracy channels like Black Pigeon Speaks and some run by Infowars. The companies are investigating how their ads appeared on the channels. It appears that YouTube did not follow its own protocols and categorized these videos properly. The New York Times told CNN uh, the paper said its ads should only appear on a list of pre-approved sites. If the channels are monetized, which Infowars has previously claimed they are, the major newspapers could have unknowingly supported disinformation and conspiracy. Ads also appeared on the Jimmy Dore Show channel, a far-left YouTube channel that peddles in conspiracy theories, such as the idea that Syrian chemical weapons attacks are hoaxes. You do know, CNN, that we bombed before there was an investigation, right? In fact, the day after we bombed is the day that the OPCW um, investigators were supposed to go to the site. So how is Jimmy Dora conspiracy theorist when he goes, he didn't use the word hoax, by the way, so you're lying. That's what that is, that's a lie. He never said the word hoax. But what he did say is, Hey, the investigators are supposed to come the day after. You're bombing before there's even an investigation. Why would you- Hey, that seems a lot like what happened in Iraq. You're like, oh, he has uh, WMDs, and anyway, let's, uh, let's go. Here, uh, Colin Powell holding up a bullshit thing of yellow cake at the UN. Ah, uh, go, rush to war. Now, by the way, since then, we've learned, because other outlets are reporting it, certainly not Western outlets, but other outlets are reporting it, um, the evidence we have right now is that that indeed was not a chemical weapons facility that we bombed. It was a fucking medical facility where they made snake venom, uh, where they made anti-venom for snake bites. That's not me speaking. We, I've showed you the article. You can look through it yourself. Okay? So, who's really the conspiracy theorist? You guys take the State Department's propaganda and run it mindlessly. By the way, that's, that's like what? That's exactly what you guys accuse RT of doing. Oh my god, doing... Propaganda for the Russian government, mindlessly. Oh, nobody should trust RT. What about you, CNN? You mindlessly parrot whatever the fuck the State Department and the Trump administration tells you. Somebody like Jimmy Dore comes along, shows a minimal amount of skepticism, simply by saying, hey, I don't, uh, I don't think the word of the State Department is gospel. I don't think the word of Donald fucking Trump is gospel. So maybe we wait for evidence. Maybe we do an investigation. Oh, conspiracy theorist you are, Jimmy Dore. You're a conspiracy theorist, sir. By the way, again, minimal amount of skepticism. Who puts a chemical weapons facility in the middle of their capital city? Who does that? And if it were a chemical weapons facility, when, when they bombed it, that's it. You can't be anywhere near that site. You can't be anywhere near that site. Because, obviously, you're gonna have the remnants of the chemical weapons in the air and people are gonna get sick. But, of course, people were in the site afterwards. And all foreign media outlets are reporting that. Not in the West, because you guys are doing propaganda for the State Department and the Trump administration, but other media outlets are reporting it. So, Jimmy Dore is actually doing the job on this issue that journalists are supposed to do. CNN, one of the most respected news outlets, is smearing him for showing a minimal amount of skepticism. And then the further irony of it is, Jimmy Dore on his show on a daily basis, you know what he calls for? Higher wages. And no war. He's against war. So the guy who routinely is calling for peace is routinely calling for people to get better wages and have more fulfilling lives because Jimmy recognizes the system is screwing uh, working people. That guy gets smeared as, quote, an extremist? You're the fucking extremists! You're the extremists! You know what's extreme? When you don't openly reject and fight against war and hold the people in power accountable when you're supposed to be one of the most respected news organizations in the goddamn country! That's extremist! That's extremist! That you're in lockstep with the fucking criminal government! What, what about George W. Bush and his fucking offensive war in Iraq and uh, torture at Guantanamo Bay? The mainstream media refused to call torture, torture. They called it enhanced interrogation because the Bush administration wanted them to call it enhanced interrogation and CNN has the nerve to call a fucking straight shooter an extremist. But make no mistake about it, this isn't an error. It's not like, whoops, sorry, we didn't do our fucking research. They know what Jimmy Dore is. They want to smear him. They want to smear him, they want to compare him to literal Nazis. 
Because guess what? Now guys like Jimmy Dore, ooh, they're competition. Hmm, you see all the views that that guy's getting? Wow, his show's getting really popular now, isn't it? I, I mean, what are we going to do? We can't genuinely compete and get the key demographic. Sorry, we, we, we don't have the ability with fucking hosts like Anderson Cooper and Wolf Blitzer and Don Lemon who have the personality of watching paint dry you have these boring people who've never said an interesting thing in their lives and they just repeat whatever's on the fucking prompter like Ron Burgundy and they don't hold people in power accountable and they don't do their jobs well how how are you going to compete with a guy who's a straight shooter and is passionate and cares about these issues and gives people the facts and then gives his opinion on the issues how are you going to you can't compete with that what do they do shit it's not a fair fight uh, we'll just use all of our resources, and we have endless resources. We'll use that to run a, a, a smear article, do a hatchet job, and try to get them fully demonetized. And the sad thing is, guys, it's working. I'm not saying it's working and that you guys are looking at CNN and going, oh, they nailed it. No, it's working in, in their intended consequence. Their intended consequence is, hey, pff, cut off their funding, man. That's what the original, uh, you know, adpocalypse was. And for those of you, some of you might think like, oh, the apocalypse, it ended. It never ended. There was a bounce back, but then, you know, it, it tapered off. So what happened was shows like mine, shows like David Packman's, we were on a blacklist where we made no money for a while because uh, just all the ads were taken away from news and politics as a result of, uh, you know, I think it was the Wall Street Journal's investigation where they found some ads on some hateful content and YouTube said, throw the baby out with the bathwater, demonetize all the news and politics. But then what happened is after a few weeks, we were re-monetized, but we're in a permanent lower tier now. I know this is the case for me. I know this is the case with many other political YouTubers because I've had conversations with them and basically the same thing's going on with them. What happened was basically a, maybe a 50% bounce back. So we were doing really well. They took away all of our funding. And then when they put the ads back on, it was maybe a 50% bounce back. Now, when I look at articles like this, you know what they're trying to do, right? They want, they want full, full demonetization of news and politics. That's exactly what they want. Again, if they didn't want that, then they wouldn't have gone to the advertisers and narked and said, Hey, did you know that one of your ads ran on a neo-Nazi channel? Maybe you should stop advertising with YouTube uh, totally. So that's what this is. They view us as a competitor. So they take the fringe examples of genuinely hateful content. They tell the advertisers you're getting on the genuinely hateful content. So, hey, why are you advertising with YouTube at all if you can't trust where they're placing all your ads? That's what this is, guys. That's what this is. But, but, they didn't account for everything here. Why? Because here's what they don't realize. A guy like Wolf Blitzer is a boring piece of shit, stale motherfucker. And you put Wolf Blitzer on YouTube in a genuine free marketplace where he has to garner views that aren't just given to him by virtue of the fact he's coasting on name recognition from the fucking 1980s. He would sink so quickly. So a guy like Wolf Blitzer, if you defund him with advertisers, well, he's fucked. There's no way around that. But a guy like Jimmy Dore, a guy like Tim Black, you know, shows like The Humanist Report, shows like Secular Talk, or the Rational National, you know, you go down the list of all these outlets, what they can't account for is that we're the Bernie Sanders to their Hillary Clinton. So Hillary's the fundraising juggernaut name recognition, coasting off the big name and selling out daily to Wall Street and for-profit health insurance companies and uh, military the military industrial complex. Well, we come along and we go, listen, do we hate it that you jack our uh, ad revenue? Yes, all of us do, because it's, nefar it's nefarious and you're doing smear jobs. But because of Patreon, you guys basically have swept in and, and saved us. It doesn't matter that the entire audience is saying, hey, fuck you, CNN, that's a bullshit article, they're smearing on purpose. It doesn't matter that people said this the last time when the Wall Street Journal did it and when other outlets did it, it doesn't matter. YouTube, it's corporate now. I mean, it's fully corporate. So those big wigs are totally out of touch with the audience, totally out of touch with reality. And what'll happen is they'll panic, the advertisers will panic and go, Oh, people are going to think that Coca-Cola is genuinely pro-KKK. And they'll flee again and, and it's, it's going to be up and down, up and down. And it's, it's just this tsunami of living 
in an unstable business model like we have on YouTube. Fuck CNN. This is nothing but a smear job and a hatchet job. And they're liars. And they're the real problem. Jimmy Dore's not the problem. It's not that Jimmy Dore and I agree on everything. It's that he's obviously an honest voice. He's a voice for peace. He's a voice for higher wages for working people. He means well. He does way better research than anybody on fucking CNN. And they can't deal with the fact that we're handing them their ass on a silver platter in the key demographic. So they have to cheat to stay competitive. But again, what they can't account for is you guys. Because Cat's already out of the bag with guys like me and Jimmy. So if anything, at this point, the more they come for us, they meaning mainstream media, corporate media, YouTube, and advertisers, the more that they abandon us or, or come after us, the more you guys support us. Because you realize what's happening here. You see the bullshit. You see uh, what's going on and how this is nothing but a power play from the powers that be in the status quo to make sure that the, the up-and-coming outlets do not replace them. This is like the Morse code industry throwing a Hail Mary pass in their fight against the telephone, which is coming out. We're the telephone, they're the fucking Morse code industry. And listen... Other than the genuine, like, oh, neo-Nazi, KKK, jihadist outlets, other than the outlets, you know, that are really calling for, like, terrorism and genuinely hateful, I'm, I just want to be clear that I will stand and fight for, you know, outlets, even outlets I don't agree with, to continue to get their funding, because to demonetize simply because you disagree... With somebody. It's one again, it's one thing if there's somebody calling for genocide and Coca-Cola's like, I don't want to be on their channel. Fair enough. But I mean, even a guy like Alex Jones, as terrible as he is, you know, some of his stuff, it, like he called again, he's like, I don't want to be involved in Syria. We can't shouldn't be bombing Syria. Okay, well, uh, should those videos be demonetized? No. How about a guy like Paul Joseph Watson, the prison planet guy? Again, I don't agree with the guy on anything. Uh, or almost anything. I agree with them on some things, but like 90% of the stuff we disagree on. But should he be dis uh, should he be demonetized for, you know, kind of standard conservative opinions? No. And the list goes on and on. So, you know, a guy like Ben Shapiro. Ben Shapiro advocated for the Iraq war. And we know what happened as a result of that. It was an illegal war. Do I think Ben Shapiro should be demonetized? No. So uh, uh, that's what I just want to make clear at the end here. This isn't a partisan thing. This is about um, the status quo, the establishment, corporate media coming after the young up-and-comers who are simply a superior form of what they do. And they're scared. They're scared. They don't know how to deal with it. So they smear us. They do hatchet jobs against us in order to try to defeat us by cheating.